Hello folks, welcome back. It's David with Euro Motorcycles. And today we are going to be installing a sump protection plate for a Euro motorcycle. Um, this is the plate that you may have seen online or on other people's uh, Euro motorcycles. It goes right over the oil pan or protects the oil pan from um, any obstruction that might hit it while you're out on the trail or things of that nature. So we're gonna, we're gonna install that today. But prior to doing that, I'm gonna go over a couple of uh, changes that were made prior to the 2019 model year to help improve cooling. We're gonna talk about oil pans a little bit. We're gonna talk about the flow uh, of the oil itself. So stick around and I'll be back with you in just a moment. Okay, we're back. So skid plates, sump protection plates, as Ural calls it, uh, what, what's, the, uh, what's the difference there? Well, you'll notice that the, um, the one that Ural makes is uh, pretty abbreviated. It, it's not real big. And uh, the reason that the factory makes one like this is that the airflow uh, that cools the engine they don't want to limit that or impede that in any way so they make the smallest most abbreviated one they can although it is very very strong um, it's not going to protect your head pipes and things like that as other uh, products out there on the market do the reason being is the um, the flow of cool air across the cylinder fins the head fins and the, the sump or oil pan fins is what does the majority of the oil cooling. So they don't wanna do anything that's gonna limit that airflow across the engine. Some of the other ones out on the market, um, not saying anything good or bad about them at all. Uh, I've actually run a couple of them myself, but they do uh, tend to come up a little bit in the front and it basically creates a wall that the, the wind, the cooling wind, uh, can't get to all portions of the, of the engine. If you look at the, the little invisible uh, opposed twin that I have here, this is actually a 3D printed case, you will see that uh, right in here, this, you, can, you may, may not be able to see it on film, but uh, you can actually see where the oil pump sits here. Now, Ural, uh, the Ural oiling system, the oil pump actually pumps oil up to the top of the motor primarily for uh, the cam and the valve train. And then it trickles back down into the, the sump or the base where the crank with the oil slingers basically act like a splash bath system. So you have two types of oiling going on. The splash bath system is what you would see on a lot of older motors where it basically slinging through the, um, the bath of oil. It's going to fling oil up and lubricate all the uh, parts that, that need to be lubricated as the engine is running. It, it's actually very effective, but they also have um, an oil pump that is driven off a little gear up on the top here off the back of the cam and it does pump oil up to the top of the motor and then it trickles back down. Now those of you that have been around Euro for a while um, you'll recognize this oil pan this is the standard oil pan it's been around I think it was even this is for a 750 here but I believe it would even fit the 650 cases I don't think this has changed much for, over the years at all. So this would be your standard capacity pan. And then somewhere along the line, I can't tell you exactly when, they started producing a deep sump pan. So back in the day, and even still today, this is considered an upgrade because it will hold a, another liter 
of oil. Now, does, it benefit, does the motor benefit from that? Absolutely. Um, the more oil in the engine, the more opportunity for that uh, volume of oil to cool. The only drawback was, this is the old oil pump, the older style oil pump, and then this is the screen that actually um, went on that oil pump. The drawback to this was the oil pump sits just about level with the lip there. So unless the, um, you were very vigilant about keeping the oil level on your engine where it was supposed to be according to the dipstick, if it ran low or if you were on an incline that you might encounter um, dry something where it wasn't picking up anything out of the, out of the uh, oil pan. So prior to 2019, an effort was put into increasing the engine cooling. Part of this change was increasing the surface area of the cooling fins um, for the cylinders, the heads, and the pan. So if you look at, this is the new style pan that came out in 2019. And this, like I said, this was being worked on prior to that. But if you look at the original pan, and I'll put a, a graphic up here in a moment too, but you look at the original and the new style, you can see the depth is almost nearly the same. But if you look in here, they actually dropped the bottom to hold another half liter more than the original uh, pan. So it didn't increase it by one full liter like the deep sump did, but it did increase the stock volume from 2.1 to 2.6 liters, so an extra half a liter. Now with that change came a change in the oil pump, and then it came with a change to the pickup. So the old one here, which is basically a screen, this one actually drops the pickup into the bottom of the pan a little bit more. And with the changes in design and casting um, with the extra volume, it's basically uh, sitting just ever so slightly off the bottom uh, when the oil pump is fitted up into the engine case. So no matter how the mo motorcycle is articulating, you can almost be sure it is going to be um, picking up some oil in the pump to lubricate the top end of the motor. Now, I know a few of you are going to be asking, will this fit my older 750? Absolutely. The um, bolt pattern hasn't changed over the years, but it would require that you use the new pump so you could use the new pickup. Otherwise, you would be in the same boat as you would if you just installed the deep sump. Anyway, I thought that would be an interesting little tidbit of information for you folks out there. Um, a lot of you may not be aware that, you know, in 2019 with the other changes that happened that year, um, that there was a lot more going on with it. And one of those changes was increased cooling capacity on the cylinders, the heads, and the uh, ability to hold more oil in the pan, all in an effort to try and uh, keep the motor cooler. So without further ado, we'll get to installing this uh, sump protection plate on my 2021 example I have here, but it does have the 2022 two and a one high pipe. So uh, we'll, we're going to install it on that bike and you can follow me through the process. The uh, installation on an older bike with the two and a two exhaust, the old pontoon exhaust would be similar, uh, although maybe even a little bit easier. So stick around and we'll put that on right now. So the sump protection plate will only fit with the standard uh, oil sump. It will not fit with the deep sump, but it will fit most patrol gear up, CT, tourist, going back for several years. You will also need stock exhaust or the GPR exhaust. So you're going to lift the bike up on the center stand, take your side panel off and disconnect one of the battery terminals. Then on the left and right O2 sensor, you're going to see that there's a couple zip ties holding the um, 
wiring to the frame. You're going to cut those zip ties And then you can reach up under the gas tank and find the connector and disconnect that. This is going to be true for the left and right side both. Once you've got the connector uh, disconnected, you're going to want to make sure that you snake the O2 sensor wiring out from anything that it might get caught on because we're going to leave the O2 sensors in the head pipe and we're going to remove the head pipe and the cats in one piece. Catalytic converters I should say. So with a 10 millimeter tool remove the clamps just past the catalytic converters. This should be similar even on the two and the two low pipes. Then you're going to remove the, the nuts that are holding the head pipe to the head. In this case, it's two 13, uh, I used a 13 millimeter socket uh, to remove both the left and right side. Then with the butt of my hammer, which is rubber coated, um, I hit side to side, left and right, back and forth to uh, slip the connecting points off the cats, off the pipe. And then with a little finagling, I was gently able to lower the whole thing down as an assembly. Now that that's out of the way, you can take a 19 millimeter wrench and socket and loosen the engine uh, bolts that go through the frame and through the engine case. Now on the front, there's going to be a nut and a flat washer, as you'll see here. And on the back, there's a nut and a lock washer. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you put these back in the same place. This will be true for both left and right side. A nut and a flat washer on the front, a nut and a lock washer on the back. Now you can take the skid plate and slide it up into place I like to put the skid plate on the inside or the right side and get it hung up on one of the engine bolts that go through the case and then put the front on. So the whole right side is, is on and being held in place with the, uh, the nuts and washers. Then you can tap the bolts through a little bit with the butt of your hammer. You don't want to mar it with anything metal on the front and the back. And then you can slip the left side up over both the front and the rear bolts. Then you can tap it back through. This is the rear. That's the front. And then you can get that hardware put back on. The back hardware, if the lock washer looks deformed in any way, you'll want to replace it. You don't want these coming loose at all. So now you can tighten up the hardware for those through bolts, but you're going to want to make sure that you've tightened them up sufficiently that there's equal threads on both sides. Now you can straighten out your foot pegs on both the left and right side and tighten that back hardware. And again, you want to make sure that equal amount of threads is coming through on each side. If you're worried about these coming loose, I might suggest you use a little blue, blue Loctite, just a little bit when you're securing all the hardware. Now you can take the head pipe and just get it started slipping onto the uh, exhaust. 
and you want to make sure that the flanges are sort of lined up with the, the port on the head. And then with my rubber mallet, I gently tap each side, left and right again, back and forth. It may take several tries to get the flange seated uh, and the slip joint on the exhaust fully engaged. You want to make sure that it is fully seated so you have no leaks. Start your hardware on the flange. And then take your 13 millimeter and tighten those back up. Repeat for the right side. Now you're going to put your O2 sensor wiring and connect the connector and then tuck the wiring back where it was so it runs up the frame and you can tuck both the left and right connectors up under the tank back in their original locations. Slide your exhaust clamps back and tighten those up with a 10 millimeter tool. You're going to want to check these after a few miles and make sure that they haven't come loose and retighten them if necessary. You don't want any exhaust leaks. Now you can route your, your wires and put on a couple new zip ties. Make sure that there's a, a little bit of slack at the O2 sensor itself. You don't want it getting pulled. Repeat for the right side. This bike is equipped with a carbon canister, so I'm only putting one zip tie up towards the top of the frame. The rest of it is routed out of the way under the carbon canister. If you don't have this carbon canister, you, you can use two zip ties there. Spread apart slightly, just like the left-hand side. Reconnect your battery. Replace your side panel, and that's pretty much it. Lower the bike, and you're done. So there you have it. That concludes our video of sump protection plate installation on a 2021-22 with the 2 and a 1 high pipe. Now that installation may be a little bit more um, in depth than a lot of you would like to get into with your personal bike. I understand that. That's why we always encourage you to reach out to your dealer or service center. And if you've made it this far into the video, I want to say thank you. I truly do appreciate you watching. Ride safe, and I'll talk to you next time.